Today I'm going to show you how I installed my diesel heater, air conditioner, porch lights, and fittings enclosing the ceiling on my 6.8 by 15 foot conversion trailer. This page is about a man that bought his first pickup truck after he retired. He named it the Galaxy. This truck gave him so much capability that he decided to do more with it. So he bought this horse trailer that he wished to convert into an RV so he could travel around the country and enjoy life in a different way. These are the tales of the Galaxy and the Angel Star. In my previous video, I discussed how I installed solar panels on my trailer. But in Georgia, it gets cold in some places, and we had a light dusting of snow, which prompted the need of me getting an alternate form of heat in my system. So I decided to install a diesel heater. My initial problem was going to be where to install this diesel heater, since I was limited on space in my RV. So I decided to install it underneath the location of my sofa in the trailer, as you can see here. They had to strategically place it because of the updated sparring beneath the floor that made it kind of tough to, to uh, find the right location to go through. My biggest concern was to how I was going to run the uh, wire to the fuel pump. It had no other way of going through, so I put it through the same hole that the rest of these things went through, and it worked out pretty good. Now you can visualize what the, hot, what the heater is in relation to my uh, sofa. So once the sofa moves back, you'll no longer see it. I had to raise the sofa up to make clearance for the heater. After much ado, I got the diesel heater working. Gotta figure out how to change the settings. But uh, right now it's working. It took a while to get it primed. And I, don't, I still don't like the smell of diesel, but in here, I don't smell it this morning when I open the door. But it's getting warm in here. Now I can show you what I did when it comes to the ducting of the heat. I put on this, this one uh, duct that comes with it, and then I have to run the other ducts to it. So I converted this piece of wood to make a duct framework for the heater to attach to and to distribute the heat throughout the RV. Turned out pretty nicely. Another good idea has been implemented. Vent that twists the front and a vent that faces the back. I installed the one liter tank on my running boards on the outside of my trailer. This is a good place for it to be. Nothing would bump into it and it looks good where it sits. And I ran the line through the bottom of the running board underneath the trailer. Yeah, the heat's working now. Got down to four degrees Celsius. There's up to five, but that's with my body heat, I do believe. But here comes some heat. One cold night in Georgia, it was set to get down to 29 degrees. So I didn't know what was gonna happen inside the, the RV. So I set the heater to, to run. This is how much fuel was in it when I started that night. Here's what it looked like the next morning. This is how much fuel we use after eight hours. I walk in and it's 11 or 12 degrees centigrade now compared to 45 last night. So the heat just kept it cool. So the diesel heater was a good add to my RV, even though later on you'll see I would add an air conditioner that has a heat element. But this is good to have because I can start this remotely and warm the RV even though it's not plugged in or I'm not in the vehicle itself. Now I'm gonna move forward to show how to do some finishing touches uh, some on the outside and mostly on the inside of the RV. But first I had to plug off this cover for where I used to have my um, electrical inlet. I will later put a water out inlet there in replace of that. I just sealed this off, keep water out of it. 
before I completed the inside, I had to make sure that there was no more leaks. And I ran most of my, my support for the solar panels through the, the ribs for the roof, but some of them had nothing to attach to. So I had to put these washers in with sealant to make sure that nothing came through, even though there was no rib there for the screws to go into. Even though the roof vent had tape around them from the manufacturer, I found I had to put more to make it stop leaking. And then I went through and put uh, additional uh, roofing tape on my brackets for the solar panels so I make sure there was no external intrusion of water there. So then I had to go finish putting in my wood paneling against the wall for any exposed um, metal surfaces and or insulation. Whole right wall is wooded now. Just had to fill in the gaps and get ready for painting. Now you're gonna see how two older men tried to hoist an 80 plus pound air conditioning unit on the top of this tall trailer. Keep in mind, we had to avoid the roof vents on the left side of the, of the roof, as well as the, the solar panels on the right side of the roof. It uh, seemed easy at first, but it was kind of hard to do, but we got it done. I like to thank my brother-in-law Walt for his time and effort in figuring out how to get this thing on the roof. Once you get the air conditioner in place, you got to make sure it lines up with the holes underneath and uh, be able to fasten the bolts from bottom. Once you have the unit in place and bolt it down, you got to go back up and make sure this thing is properly sealed on all sides at every surface you can get a hold of. That's the best thing to do to avoid leaks. The AC is installed on top of the roof. And check out a few nighttime views of my current progress on this conversion. So let's move on so I can show you what we did on the inside for this air conditioner. Note I had to include some uh, lateral support to keep the uh, tightening this thing down from submarining the roof line even though I had uh, 16 inches in between each, each uh, strut, I still need additional support on the other side. It's been raining all afternoon. No signs of water anywhere. I did get one drop of water, but it didn't come from the AC. It came from over near the vent. Near the refrigerator. Gotta figure out what that is. But one very much. And then I had to actually wire the air conditioner into the uh, wiring for the trailer. So here's my um, alternating current connection that had to run through the side on back to the air conditioner. I made my initial connection, but I hadn't wired it to the box yet. All the roof line back behind there and down again. And it's gonna connect to the bottom of the box there. Well, y'all, it's time to give the AC install a first try. I haven't fully installed it up there yet because I need to put the ceiling in. But in the meantime, the inverter's on. I'm going to hit the circuit breaker. And I didn't get anything. Okay, folks, this is try number four. I had to switch the wires around. Somehow this wiring is different. Let's see what happened when I hit the power button. Wow, there it is. It came on. And it 
is the blue one. Wow. Success. I have the inverter plugged into the 30 amp supply from the house. Got the heater going. Had to set to set to five. It did a higher startup speed and it now it slowed down some. But the point is, that's all I needed. The inverter hadn't complained at all with the, the heater going or the air conditioner for that matter. So I decided that I needed some light at my little storage area. So I installed these lights in the front part and the back part of the storage area. Now I just finished wiring some storage lights. You can see I under here at nighttime. And the storage lights under there are controlled by this first switch here. Voila. On. Off. Oh, nice bright light. This one is my exterior light that I have out the side in the back. These are the exterior LED lights I installed on the right side of the trailer. And these are the LED lights I installed on the rear of the trailer. Got both rear lights installed now. The one on my right, I might change around and do it like I did the other one. That's what the exterior lights look like during the daytime. You can see how bright they are, even during the daylight hours. And there's the real ones. I'll show you what they look like at night. Okay, I'm standing inside the RV at nighttime. I'm gonna check the lights at nighttime. It's gonna be the storage lights. Quite effective. That's wonderful. They work good. Now we're going to try the exterior light. As you can see outside, it's dark out there other than the other lights I have from the house. So we're going to hit those lights. See what I got. Voila, look at there. Whew. It's daytime right here, y'all. I'm going to go around the back, see what I have. Whew, yeah. You can see it quite well. Got one light pointing straight down, the other one pointing out this way. So I think it covers more light that way. So I think I'll keep it fixed like that. Looking good. There's light at nighttime. I really like the way these lights turned out. They make my trailer look really nice and I can see quite well at nighttime. I continued to do more work on the trim, um, getting this thing ready for paint. I even went out and bought a Vizio audio soundbar for music. It's compatible with my TV. So I'm gonna be uh, entertaining all kinds of ways in this RV. Another day complete. I got all the rest of the kitchen trimmed out. So for the panels I gotta put up and the rest of the cabin, the main cabin, done including the back doors these walls i got all the way down to the corner now so it's good now all i gotta do is uh, smooth some stuff out and get ready to paint this area became a concern for me before i got to put my roof in so i had to do something about them okay y'all today i spent time concealing the wires running from my main unit to my lights I'll do the ones over here with when I do the roof, the ceiling rather. And I got them all going over behind the TV. Those will disappear when I put the ceiling in for the most part. And I got to shorten these wires and it'll be done. You can also see I raise the um, reading lamps over where I can use them for the bed. So that's high enough now. And this one don't interfere with your head anymore. I raised the thermostat for the heater up and put the thermostat for the AC in place. It's coming together. I didn't realize after getting the air conditioner together, I need to start insulating this roof. Started on an insulation for the roof. Starting from the back, it's coming along. 
I had mentioned before how the installation was the most time consuming things I had to do here because each piece had to be an individual cut for the side. Now I start working on the roof parts so I can get those done so I can install my ceiling. Today's progress included having insulated the ceiling in most of the main cabin. I ran out of material. I'm gonna finish that up and I'll do the bathroom area. And I put in this wall that's gonna support the hot water heater and the water pump. Coming soon. So I wouldn't mess up the ceiling, I decided to go ahead and paint the cabin all the same color before I installed the ceiling. That would include the original black wall paneling that came with this uh, unit, as well as the wood paneling I installed later. Here's today's progress. The shower room, bathroom is fully painted. Paint along the walls kitchen side, walls on the bedroom side, even rail at the bottom. I just need to put stuff back up. Let it dry good. But it came out really good. After I painted it, I realized there's some creases that I left in here that I intended to be able to take these walls down. But I just realized when I redesigned this, I have no need to take these walls down. So I'll probably fill these creases in and paint again later. Here we go, everything connected back up again inside. And everything's one color. That's good. Next thing I'll do is do something with the cabinets. But before that, I need to go ahead and start finish installation on the roof and put the ceiling in success and progress and now on to the bathroom area it's all done insulation in the bathroom area i know the wires look a mess but i start taping those up so i can get ready for the ceiling it's done more progress i'll finish it up But before I finish the ceiling, I want to run the wires to the porch light I, I realized I needed. I, it took me a while to find the right porch light for what I was doing because I didn't want a solar one that would come on when I was traveling because it was nighttime. So I found this one that is motion sense, but I can turn it on and off as needed. Finally got this porch light installed. And it, when, I, when I have it on, it activates the motion out here. I'll be able to see it at nighttime when I'm trying to open the, the door. So good so far, and it works. Now I'm gonna check and see how my motion light work on the porch light I installed. The light you see now is from the outdoor light from the house. And I turn off all the other lights and see what happens when I come around here. Wow, it picked it up. It picked me up, rather. And it's pretty bright. I'll be able to see the keys I need to open, use to open the door now. That's good. So I was really happy with this porch light. Even though it cost me a little more than the other ones, it was American made and it works quite well. Now we're gonna see how all the lights outside work together. Exterior lights at home. I go outside and I can see that the front light, the porch light zone, these lights light up the whole side and the lights around back keep everything nice and bright. So I'll be able to see out here. Maybe I can install some lights underneath in case I need to see underneath there. But that's good. Looks really nice with all these lights. I'd be able to see things. All right, so now we're gonna do the reverse. We're gonna be inside. I'm gonna turn off the interior lights. Then we'll step outside. Wow, 
voila, the light came on. So it saw the door open up. So that's one good light. I can turn it on, off when I'm traveling. So the light won't come on in the middle of the night while I'm going down the road. And if I don't want it to come on, I can turn it off with the switch. There's the light. It's looking for movement. It comes on. And here's the grand moment I have been waiting for quite some time. Get my ceiling installed. I would like to thank my friend Jerry for helping me install that first piece, which is to the left forward of this picture as you're looking at it. That was a full piece and it was very hard for me to do by myself. And uh, he helped me do that and helped me with some of the other panels. So he, it was really helpful. And I got a lot of progress after using his help. Okay, the ceiling is mostly done. I gotta do this piece for over here. And for that, sorry, don't make it dizzy. But I got most of the main cabin done and even into the bathroom on one side. So nothing else to bang my head on, but I'll get this done soon. One more light dangling. That's gonna be a special piece because I gotta cut two holes in for the vents and the light. Here we are with the rear part of the cabin. The ceiling's up. Made a few mistakes, but it's up. So now I had to work on the front part of the main cabin after I finished the back half. It was a little more difficult, oddly enough, but I got it done. Got the whole main cabin finished now. I do some touch-ups. This piece was odd piece. It didn't fit like the rest of them did for some reason. But come on, AC's blowing. The only thing I have left is the little kitchen area. I gotta make a decision first. The decision I had to make was whether or not I was just gonna use that saddle pole that came with the trailer to use it for my shower head. I realized it just put them in a bad position overall for the plumbing. So I decided not to use it and to go ahead and seal it up. You'll get to see what that looks like on one of my later videos when I show my future progress. So it all came together. I know there's a lot. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on my future video. Take care.